Hello everyone, I am back! My sickness is for the most part gone and I'm ready to do a proper video this week. The content as far as this video goes will consist of the last three weeks due to the fact that, you know, I don't always have content for a whole week worth of stuff so I will wait two weeks to do a video. Um, and that's kind of what happened last week was I didn't have enough content for the very first week so I waited a span of two weeks and then I got sick. So now we have this whole week as well that I was getting stuff on. So now we have three weeks worth of content to get done with. So guys, let's go ahead and get started. We've got two things over on the Nintendo side. This involves on the 3DS and as well as the SNES Classic. So for the 3DS, if you want to get more a little personalized on your 3DS, you are able to now change the LED notification color. It's that little LED light that blinks, say, orange whenever a um, friend comes online or blue when you get an actual notification, things like that. You can actually change that color now and it will not cause a break for your console. It used to cause bricks back in the day, but it will not anymore, which is awesome news. And if you are afraid of that, you can always check out the source code if you know how to read source code, stuff like that, to make sure it is all good. Do you own an SNES Classic? Have you modded that said SNES Classic to add more games to it so that you can, you know, enjoy more of your childhood? Did you realize you could only add around 200 games before it got completely full? Well, guys. The people over at Reddit have you covered. You are now able to add more games with a device that is essentially called a OTG USB device. Um, it's mainly meant for a phone. It has a male and a female micro USB port on it as well as a regular USB port on it. So essentially you just plug the device into the back of the SNES Classic. You put a, a USB drive into it, whatever size you need, and then of course you plug the actual power cable into the other end. You will be good to go. It will be able to read games off of that little USB flash drive thing that you've got in there. Now of course there is more setup than that, but it is just amazing to see that we can actually put more games onto it. And you know, you can even add N64 games and things like that if you want to now since you have all of that free space. So guys, just think for the people over at the Mini SNES Mods Reddit. They are all the ones who actually contributed to this and it's just amazing work. And of course guys, I will be putting a link in the description to one of the OTG devices that I actually saw that was recommended. It is very tiny and it is amazing. It doesn't obstruct much of the actual console itself. Um, you can buy it on Amazon, so cool. Next up guys is going to be for the PS Vita. There has been a new official firmware update. Now of course, if you are on 3.60, do not update. There's no point to update, none at all. But the newest update, 3.67, essentially it just changes a few icons here and there, but also it patches some exploit. Now the exploit that it patches actually you couldn't do anything with unless you've had a multiple chain of exploits to use with it, which no one has actually come up with yet, but that just means that there's one less exploit that you can use, so they'll have to find something else. For any of you familiar with the PSP homebrew scene, you'll be very familiar with this next homebrew on the PS Vita. So on the PSP, you had what they called a VSH menu. I almost said VHS. It's not what it is. It is a VSH menu, and you could change like the clock speed of the CPU and the GPU, and you can go to recovery menu and do a whole bunch of other stuff on it. It was a very handy little menu that all you had to do was just press one button to get to it. Well, on the PS Vita, someone has created the same thing for it. They also called it the VSH menu. It's right now version 1.1, and you are able to change things such as the clock speed and access the, I think they've made their own little recovery menu. I'm not 100% sure about that, but also like you could toggle the uh, battery display, which is really cool. So guys, if you are a fan of the PSP VSH menu, I would highly recommend you get this little homebrew for you. Next up is something I told you in last week's video, in the video when I was sick, and I'm only mentioning it again because it's very, very important, and it's just amazing, amazing news. So the PS3 exploit, the one to actually downgrade and install custom frameworks, has been released. 
It was released over the American Thanksgiving Day around, close to that, it was in that week essentially. And it allows you to install custom firmware and then you can do whatever other homebrew you wanted. Now you have to make sure you are on 4.82 firmware, official firmware, as well as a, you have to make sure you have a fat PS3 or one of the models of the PS, the slim PS3s that actually are compatible. Not all slim PS3s are compatible with this exploit. Do read the very first post, I will link it in the description, read the very first post and it will tell you how to figure out which one is compatible and which one is not. I do not want to see any of you guys break over this, so please read the very first post very, very carefully. I myself have modeled my brother's PS3 with it. I actually was trying to do a tutorial video on it, but then I forgot to hit the record button when I was recording the actual PS3. Whoops! So, yes, I am in the lookout for my own PS3 because the PS3 I have um, is not compatible with it. I am trying to get my own PS3 that will be compatible so then I can do a tutorial for you all. So, there's that. Next up, we got an oldie. Not as old as the next console I talk after this, but it's still pretty old. So, we're going to be talking about the very first console I ever soft modded myself, and that would be the PS2. Yes, people are still making homebrew for the PS2. Crazy. So, that homebrew is called Extreme Elite Boot Plus. I do not like the name. There's, just call it something simple like Boot Plus. That. Anyway, so this Extreme Elite Boot Plus, or I'm just going to call it for short, XBE, because it's a lot easier. This is essentially going to be another Freemic boot. It will be able to run out the PS2 right on startup, but with different features or more features, I really don't know. They didn't post too much information. They intentionally didn't post much information because they're just going to release everything out in the open when it actually gets released, which is going to be in the beginning of next year. I am kind of excited to see how it goes, but I have a feeling I'm still going to stick with Free McBoot just because I already have everything set up for Free McBoot, and it's something I've been using for the past so many, so many, so many, so many, so many, so many years. But we've got one last thing to talk about, and that is with the fifth generation consoles. Now, the fifth generation consoles consist of the PlayStation 1, the Nintendo 64, the Dreamcast, or the or the Genesis. I think it's the Genesis. I could be totally wrong. I'm sorry guys, I didn't look this up beforehand. Anyway, you all probably know what I'm going to be talking about since we're still in the Sony section. We're going to be talking about the PS1. Yes, the PS1. The original, the OG, whatever you want to say. So, the PS4, it had internet. The PS3, it also had internet. The PS2, it had internet too. The PS1, yes. It did have internet. Back in 1997, Sony released a educational disc, only meant for different schools and such, for very few of schools, I should say, and you were able to actually connect to the internet. It was very rudimentary. You were able to connect to a web browser. Well, they had a web browser in it. You don't connect to a web browser. They actually had a web browser application on the disc, as well as a email client. It was really, really cool for back in the day. Um, there was actually a whole video about someone putting it, but anyway, the owner of one of the CDs actually decided to put the dump of the CD up on the internet archive for everyone to be able to download for free. That is cool. Now, the only stipulation, in order to actually run internet on the PS1, you have to make your own hardware because they don't actually make the hardware anymore, even if they did. I, I, they probably did, I just don't know how they did, but you do have to make your own hardware for it as well as not everything actually works properly yet. People are in the works of trying to make the internet browser work properly. It used to only be able to view a couple pages from the specific school it went to, but people are trying to make it to run, say, just regular internet pages like Google or YouTube. Probably not YouTube, that probably just takes too much stuff to do. Also, the email client does not work, but they also try to get that working as well. So, I love, I love seeing so much homebrew on older consoles. It's amazing and I want to see more. Anyway guys, that is it for this video. That is all the homebrew news I've got for you. But, let me answer the question I asked you all guys last week. 
or last videos, whenever it was. What console do I want homebrew on the most? The PS3, the PS4, or the Nintendo Switch? For my answer, I'm going to say the Nintendo Switch. Think about it. Emulators on the Nintendo Switch. Being able to actually do a handheld and being able to just dock it whenever you want to. It is amazing. I want to see it so badly. And my question for you guys this video. What console was the very first console you ever actually owned? I will be giving you guys my answer in the next video. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching and if you did like this video, please hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe button and that little bell icon so that way you get a notification every single time I release a new video. Now guys, if I am ever sick again, I will post it on my Facebook page or on my Twitter account. That way you all guys know if I actually ever get sick or if a video is going to be late and also I'll be giving you ideas of what I think might be good videos and hopefully y'all can give responses on that so guys if you haven't yet please follow my facebook page as well as my twitter now i will say this i usually use my facebook page more than my twitter so uh it's better chance of getting me over there getting in touch with me on my facebook page or over my twitter all right guys thank you so much for watching and happy homebrewing see you next video